Just outside the Gloucestershire market town of Tetbury lies Chavenage House, a stunning 16th century pile. Chavenage is no stranger to TV cameras, but it's probably best known to viewers as Candleford Manor in the hugely popular series Lark Rise to Candleford. Described as a love letter to a vanished corner of rural England, the series was a heartwarming tale of friendships, lovers and rival families. And it told the story of farm workers and peasants living alongside the landed gentry. Oh. Good morning, Mrs. Arliss. That's a merry bit of luck, sir. You've been on the road here and I'm on my way to the post office. And why is that? Oh, because of who I am, sir, and who you are. This is the exact spot where the character of Laura first cast her eyes on Candleford Manor, and it's easy to see why she was so impressed. Just walking up this drive, I already feel like I've stepped back in time and that I should be wearing a period costume. What an amazing place to live. And I'm about to meet the family who call this place home. Clearly, this is not your average two up, two down, but it is still very much a family home with three generations of the same family currently living here. At home today are, at the head of the family, David and Rona Lowesley Williams. Their two daughters, Caroline and Joanna, Joanna's husband, James, and their eight-year-old daughter, Annabelle. Oh, and not forgetting the Labrador Chili, a very appropriate name on a day like this. People turning up for a, an event or function um, might assume it's, um, it's a museum or a, a National Trust property, but actually, at the end of the day, it's, it's a family home and, and we live here. Chavenage is a huge part of our history and a great place to live. And to be honest, I cannot imagine living anywhere else. The house was built in 1576 by a wealthy sheep farmer, and only two families have owned the 1,500-acre estate since. Much of the house has barely changed in over 400 years, and the rooms are packed full of stunning period furniture and some truly amazing relics from the Cromwellian era. Caroline Losey Williams has lived in the house all of her life, and she's agreed to give me a grand tour of this very grand house. Hello, Caroline. Great to meet you. Hello, Nick. Welcome to Javenage. Thank you very much. I mean, I've just been admiring the outside of your fantastic house. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a wonderful place to be. Well, as a history buff, I just love looking around old places like this. To me, it looks like it's a Tudor build, but when was the main house constructed? The middle core of the house was built in medieval times. It was a medieval hall attached to a monastic estate. And after the dissolution of the monasteries, it was sold off first time it went into private ownership. And in 1576, they added the two wings and the porch to make it into this classic E-shape of the Elizabethan period. Well, I can see why film crews would choose to shoot here, but what's it like having them here? Um, I think everybody thinks of filming as being two men and a cameraman. But it, in fact, when you see the whole entourage arriving um, on set, it is quite scary. But they're doing a job and we, you know, we try to help them as much as possible. Well, I'd love to see more of the place. Can we have a look around? Absolutely. Thanks. Being a genuinely historic house, Chavenish provides film crews with most of what they need. And anything that doesn't actually exist, they just build themselves. Now you might find something in here quite interesting. Right. Have a look at this. The prison door from Lark Rise to Candleford. I thought I recognised it. So this is a prop? Absolutely. But it was more built as a set. Oh, they've done a fantastic job. Yeah, I would yeah. never have thought that this was fake until you actually get up close. No, it's fantastic. As you might imagine, maintaining and running a place like Chavenage isn't cheap, and hiring it out as a film location provides Caroline and her family with some welcome income. An important factor for makers of period drama is that the views from the lawn are unspoilt as far as the eye can see. There are no buildings, power plants, or even telegraph poles to worry about. It's not just the outside of the building that's grabbed the attention of the TV producers. And with rooms like this grand hall, it's easy to see why. What an impressive room. I mean, you're just surrounded with opulence and grandeur. Uh, leaving aside these original pictures, you've got an ornate marble fireplace. And these windows must have cost a fortune when they were put in during the Tudor period. And over here, we have an intricately carved wooden screen. Again, everything about it suggests a room almost fit for royalty. And just down the road, we have Prince Charles at Highgrove, who's actually visited here. 
and in the other direction at Gatcombe, Princess Anne, who's hired rooms in this place for her own private use. And of course, regular viewers of Lark Rise to Candleford would have spotted this room on numerous occasions. All we did was trot around the countryside saying hello to your tenants, yet you came back from those jaunts so much sunnier. Well, at least now you know you're not missing anything. Just across from the hall is this fantastically elaborate room that has popped up in many TV dramas and films. So what has actually been filmed here? We had um, Children of the New Forest when they set up as an office. We then had it used in casualty. Um, it was people going around a grand house. We've also had it used as a bedroom in the recent series Dracula. And of course, in Lark Rise to Candleford, it was Lady Adelaide's drawing room. The songs, the dancing, it's just what you love, entertainment. I'm not sure how cool that warbling and those peculiar instruments, entertainment. But they're doing it for us. We're expected to sit in some cold, damp school hall for them. There are over 40 rooms at Chavenage House, but one that I was particularly keen to have a look at was the Grand Ballroom. Today, this room is used for wedding receptions, which means for hundreds of years it's been the scene of grand parties, dancing and banquets. So it was the obvious choice when the producers of Lark Rise to Candleford wanted to find a location for Sir Timothy and Lady Adelaide's dining room. I think I may have to have a word with Cook. Really? I thought it was rather good. Obviously not such a refined palate. And how about this? How many family homes do you know that have their own private chapel? As well as being a filming location, a wedding venue and a house of royal approval, Chavenage is above all a home. And Caroline's sister Joanna and her family are lucky enough to live in the North Wing. With its spacious modern kitchen and homely sitting room, this area of the house has a contemporary feel without losing any of its stately grandeur. I still couldn't quite grasp what it must be like to actually live in such majestic surroundings though. How do you make a stately home a family home? So, Joanna and James, this really isn't your average family home, is it? What's it been like bringing your family up here? It's not all sort of pims and croquet on the lawn. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> um, during the summer, it's very much a working um, house. So apart from the weddings and the functions, you must get a lot of TV crews here. What's it like? Great fun. It really is fun. And actually, I take my hat off to all you lot. I never realised how hard television crews work. Uh, on a big production, you'll get you know, endless um, lorries, caravans, um, buses and so on, and support crew, and they swarm everywhere. So weighing it all up, how would you consider Chavenage? Is it a stately home, a film location, or is it a family home? It's our family home, and um, we're very lucky to be here. At the end of the day, when the wedding's finished, the film crew have gone home, it reverts very quickly to a family house, and uh, it's a fantastic place to, to live and bring up our children. As is so often the case, the real heart of this home is this kitchen. And with Joanna's home-cooked stew, made with the family's own venison on the menu, I didn't need asking twice when invited to stay for dinner. It also gave me the opportunity to find out what this house means to the head of the family, David. Chavenage means a lot to me. Um, uh, after all, I've uh, been here 51 years, so it is. Uh, it means a lot to me that it should be handed on to the next uh, generation and the generation after, hopefully. I mean, it, it certainly is an impressive house. It's one of the grandest ones I've been in in this series. I mean, I just feel like surrounded by history. Do you feel like you're living the dream? It's been a huge privilege and you're up to your right. We've all lived the dream here. Well, I'd certainly like to a little bit as well. <laughs> I've got a taste of it now. I'm not only through the food, but the architecture. It really is fantastic. Thank you so much for inviting me to a family dinner as well. I enjoy that very much. <laughs> when I came here today, I really didn't know what to expect. But what I've found living in this impressive building is a normal, everyday family, just like the rest of us. Except, of course, they've got much larger heating bills. 